What's good, y'all, and welcome to my first impressions of Chucky Season 2. Just finished off the first episode, and fantastic episode. This was a, an amazing episode, man. And yeah, let's jump in. So, as always, the show stars, uh, Be Be Bejorgiv? Bejor How the fuck do you pronounce that name? Bajorgan? Bajorgiven? I have no idea how to pronounce that, bro. Uh, and Arn... Uh, Arnus? Arn... Arnus? Arn... Arn Arson? Arn Arson? <laughs> His name's kind of hard to pronounce. Um, Zachary Arthur, Car Carrie Ann um, <clears throat> Bar Bartrick, Tracy Bel Tracy Bel Beltrano, um, Simon Webster, Brad Dourif, and Jennifer Tilly. Now, I could, now here's what I usually would give the plot synopsis, but I straight up couldn't find a straight up plot synopsis for season two, so I decided, fuck it, I'll just read the plot synopsis off IMDb for the first episode of season two. So fuck it, that's what we're doing. Anyway, after his evil plan to invade Amer America's children, children's hospital was spoiled, the demon doll now seeks revenge on those who hold heels responsible, including his ex-girlfriend, Tiffany. Now, first thing I gotta say, once again, the cast is phenomenal. Zach, uh, Zach, um... Devin, I'll just call him Devin because I, I don't want to keep butchering this dude's name. I, I, I can't pronounce it, bro. I'm sorry. Uh, and the only returning other cast members from season one are as great as always. All the way, I gotta say, love Jake's new hairstyle. Kind of like kind of shortened his hair up, not, not really rocking that afro looking at season one. Kind of shortened it. Looks really good. I fucks with it. I fucks with it. The rest of the cast is great, of course. Brad Dourif is fantastic as always. as Chucky. The cast is great. The new cast members that we got for season two that we got this first episode were pretty good. Uh, Gary, the Simon Webster who plays Gary, uh, Jake's foster. I guess younger brother. He was pretty good. A lot of the other new cast members I thought were also pretty good all around as well. First thing I also got, another thing I mentioned, the directing this episode is fantastic. I love the different camera angles they use uh, for certain scenes and the coverage they use. There was a lot of really cool and really uh, really interesting angles they used for certain shots, how they filmed the episode. Really well done. Directing this episode was fantastic. Although one scene, this this, this scene was kind of funny. It's it's stupid, but it's but it's cute and wholesome. So the episode starts off with basically you know chill with a uh, fucking um. Devin and Jake saying their goodbyes because Jake is moving moving like two hours away with his new foster parents, I guess, I think. Anyway, we'll talk more about that in the, in when I get to the my problems with the episode. Um, and so they're like, and dude's like, oh, I want to kiss you right now, but they're watching. And then he's like, oh, whatever. And <laughs> seriously, this is the most romance, romance movie shit ever. So as they start driving away, Devin rocks, runs into the street, screams Jake's name. He runs out of the car and they kiss and they do of course, do the full, <laughs> the full fucking 360 full around them as they're kissing with the music playing. It's stupid, but I couldn't help but smile. It's cute. It's awesome. It's dumb, but it's kind of awesome. It's kind of cute. But yeah, that, <laughs> that I just thought was kind of funny. I'm like, of course, you got to do the full panorama thing as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the directing of this episode is fantastic, man. Soundtrack is all I thought was overall pretty good as well. Um... The interesting thing, I also kind of liked how they kind of showed off the different characters and where they're now at post-season one, um, where they are just kind of dealing with the aftermath of what happened the, at the end of the first season. Like, we see a lot of, like, we see that uh, Lexi, I'll slip on her name for a second, Lexi kind of is taking it the worst, where we see she started doing drugs. And I don't mean, like, oh, she does a little bit, like, it looks like she, now, I, now it, at first I thought she was doing cocaine, but it seems like what we see later on in the episode, for some reason, she, like, takes, like, pills. Like, when you see in the episode, she grabs, like, these um, anxiety pills. For some reason, uses a, crunch, uh, a credit card to crush them up and then sections it off like it's cocaine. And, of course, that's all, oh, yeah, Do you know, the whole snorting it up the nose and everything. Don't know why. I don't know. Maybe it gets her high faster than just, you know, swallowing them. I guess I don't fucking know. I don't do drugs, <laughs> you know. But, yeah, so she's doing drugs. You know, Jake's trying to drain, Jake's doing his thing in Devin. We don't really know what, what kind of happened with him. All we know that he basically got some foster mother that basically left him a home alone for six months in Paris. Well, she's off, or rather, she's off in Paris. She's been gone in Paris for like six months while he's basically been on behalf of the house. So much. Oh, this doesn't sound that bad to me. I mean, you got a house all to yourself, bro. You know, uh, you know, I was like, you know, that seems like a good deal, but. 
I did like kind of like the um, what the interaction between Jake and his new foster brother. We see in the episode. He was pretty cool. The dude just strips. Although the, the funny thing about this kid, Gary, this kid strip talks like Robin from the Batman sixty. So doing the whole holy, holy, whatever Batman thing. Like we have fucking um. I know I tweeted them. One of them was like holy profanity Batman. I think one was like holy utility belt or no no. One was holy secret identity Batman when Gat when um Devin and and Jake kiss at the at the, at the beginning of the first episode, they do the full panorama thing, which uh, with that one, which that one had me die. There was a few other ones in the episode as you see in Halloween, they dress up like Batman and, and Robin, which don't know how that's even possible. I feel like DC would be on your ass for that, but whatever. You know, I thought DC's lawyers would have been on that, but yeah. But yeah, I liked the kid. I thought and I thought his interactions with Drake was were really well done. Um, Chucky, like I said, is always as entertaining as always. Um, in the show, when we were the handful of times we do see him, and I already mentioned the red. Now, the one thing I did have a problem with this episode, and I don't know now, this could just be my, I just don't remember this from season one, is that the show doesn't really fully show what kind of happened in the immediate aftermath of season one. I'm mostly referring to this with Jake, because the episode begins with Jake and, and Devin basically saying their goodbyes. Well, Jake has to go with that. He has his new Fox found. Now, mind you, the show does not introduce them at all. We don't know who these people are. I'm like, are y'all family members? Are y'all like foster parents? Like, they give no sort of introduction to them. Like, as soon as they're introduced, all we know about them is that they're that they're not that they're not completely sold on you know Jake being gay. That's all we get from them. Like, I wish they kind of like. And I don't know, maybe this was shown up in season one at the end of it, and I just don't remember. So if it is, you know, fair, then, you know, forgive me. But I would have liked them to, like, show the immediate aftermath of episode one. Introduce these people fully. Figure out why why, why Jake went with them. How they find out about Jake. And all that stuff leading into when they actually into the opening of the episode where, you know, Jake and Devin say their goodbyes. Would have liked to seen them, like, would have liked some expansion on these characters. I remember I was watching the episode, I'm like, who are these people? You know, they just kind of come out of nowhere like they've always been there, you know? So, yeah. There's an, the, the, another thing that I'm kind of interested with this season, uh, that I'm interested in, and I'm kind of hoping that the season does, is that this isn't a spoiler because this was in the trailer, but um, they but the but the show basically goes where the scene this scene basically gonna mostly take place, or probably all of it take place inside like this like like the inside like this Catholic school for, you know, delinquents, young delinquents, you know, because of what we see at the end of the first episode, which I won't get into for spoilers. But the one thing that I kind of hope they do is kind of delve more, especially given how this show, especially given how the show is showing off that Lexi has gone has become addicted to drugs to just kind of like cope with everything that's happened in season one. Is that it become that this season becomes a lot more, uh, gets a bit more psychological, and we really get into the headspace of these characters because this is something because uh, when I saw Child's Play three last year around Hall in October. Because I found out it was free on Peacock, uh, which you guys know I watched it and I loved it. And you guys, you know, I posted on Twitter and everything when I watched it. But the one thing I kind of wish the movie dealt more with is because Andy was in a military school, and just given what the sh how the movie played everything out with Chucky and everything, I wish you got a lot more psychological, where it was more of Chucky, like more mental fuckery with Andy and Chucky, and just kind of like getting more way more psychological with it than they ended, than they ended up going. Which which I felt like was kind of a waste with expensive the saying that they had you could have done a lot more with it and kind of made it a lot more psychological really showing the effect that Chucky has had on Andy's psyche and just his overall mental state you could have, I thought there was a lot of cool stuff that you could have done in that setting with Child's Play 3 taking place in the military school that the show that was a little bit more wasted I kind of hope season 2 of this show kind of like um capitalizes on that with this being inside a Christian shoe, uh, inside a Christian, a, uh, a Catholic school, Christian, Christian shoe, whatever the fuck, the bitch is a nun. But I wish, I hope they do kind of go in that more direction, kind of get a little bit more psychological because the thing like this, you could definitely get in that direction. I think it would work really well for the season. Don't know if they will. They probably won't, but I'm kind of hoping that they get a little bit more psychological because that was something I saw in Child's Play when I was watching like, damn, this would, they, they, you could have done a lot more with the setting and make it a lot more psychological. So I'm kind of hoping they do that with season two of this series, but who knows? I'm not going to hold my breath for it, but that's something I would like to see and hope for that season two does is get a little bit more psychological, especially with this, especially with this type of setting that the show will be taking place in. 
So yeah, that's my overall first impressions of Chucky of Chucky season two. Like I mentioned before, guys, uh, no promises on a full season review when the show eventually ends. Don't know. It all depends on like when. It all depends on what how I'm feeling the week that week when it ends, and you know if I get with school and everything. But I thought at the very least I give you guys a first impression of the season. It should give it now I covered season one. So yeah, overall my final rank for this episode is going to be a 9.5 out of 10, guys. And as always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new. Follow my socials if you feel like it. Links in the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.